start recording we have to understand what is the strategy okay we should obviously we we are learning about tactics we want to play but there should also be a strategy that you should use it. sir you leaving immediately so you leaving a lot he is back now yeah he is back now but he is leaving a lot he just in time like in 2 minutes yeah i know let me okay can you can you see the screen no sir not yet no no okay we'll wait but you have got the handout right so you can actually open up on your own uh, side whatever i have sent the handout okay so i'll start anyway telling i let the screen load okay so what is the i have a doubt sir i have a doubt on the handout sir so is the hand of uh, beginners 11 s1 a uh, basic strategy yeah that is the handout that is the handout yes that's correct that's the handout okay, okay. all right let get going i hope there are no more uh, network glitches on my side okay so what we are saying is strategy so strategy <clears throat> how what should be your strategy in the opening right so opening means you can consider as the first 10 moves or so okay this is a very simple get all your minor pieces out towards the center right this should be your thing that is why you play knight f3 knight c3 or knight f6 knight c6 etc and get your bishops also out and give them so you play the e4 and d4 pawns or, or rather e and d pawns you move out so that both your bishops can start moving at least one of the bishop you post it with an aggressive posture and one more bishop depending on either aggressive or defensive posture right but get a share of the center which is possible with at least one pawn in the key central squares right either e4 d4 or as white or e5 d5 as black at least one pawn you should have it in the key center if not both and then have it defended so that you can always have a stake in the center right and get your king into safety by castle right and after that both the rooks you should connect them so that they can come to the central lines and then start exerting their pressure along the central lines like e d or c sometimes f also but mostly along these e d and uh, f and c that is where you will put your rooks so that you can put use them for on open lines or open files as we call it right that should be your strategy so i have just shown here how what is an ideal way if if like black is if white what would white want to do if you just leave it to him then he would want to develop like this okay so he would like to play so that now if you see in the first position in the opening white has castled he has got all his pieces out and if complete development is complete and he has been doing done that in about 10 moves e4 d4 c3 knight d2 knight f3 1 2 3 4 5 5 both the bishops are out queen is out castling has happened and the rooks have come maybe 11 moves it is or no i think it is 10 moves only okay so this is what you would want to do but obviously oh, this much development if you are able to do it it is great but sometimes because black is also playing it is also threatening it might take you couple of more moves or you might become but but this is the ideal way that you can develop okay all your pieces are out and you are able to utilize them that is the first principle and hence you should not make pawn moves sorties or queen moves uh, trying to go here and there and ignore the development because the more pieces you have out the more you can win <coughs> right all right so so this is what uh, is the strategy in the opening what should be your strategy in the middle game right middle game you should use your space control and open lines to attack towards the enemy king right or sometimes if it is not the king but other pieces are there that also you can attack but you have to use open lines which means that rooks wherever your rooks are there you have to put pressure sometimes you double the rooks like here it is shown right 
so that the groups are exerting pressure and you use that always think about what open your opponent is trying to do it is because it is not just what you are trying to do but your opponent might have also been thinking cleverly to attack your king or your other pieces or might have some devious plan so you should always think about what he is trying to do understand that also and you should be alert for tactics right and we had we had seen different types of tactics and we had seen that one clear sign for tactics is if there are loose undefended pieces lying around okay or if there are uh the king is not safe then you know that some tactics are possible with even without it sometimes tactics are possible but if these two things are there then you should be especially careful and look for tactics and i think by now you have learned a lot of those tactics right you have learned about uh, forks pins discovered attacks discovered check uh, skewer right double check all of those tactics you have uh, learned quite a lot of six at least six seven of them so you should be alert about various kinds of tactics in the middle game okay and if you try to create threats try to win a pawn uh, try to attack at least win a pawn or a piece maybe and then try to go to the end game right so that is the that is the strategy in the middle game vedant and anup are playing swiss tournament okay yes sir in the class in the class yep i hope uh, are you there vedant and uh, no i hope no, you are playing i didn't mean the team so they told uh, vedan type me in the chat box uh, join the magnus carlson uh, swiss tournament they allowed me then after that there's a he told me to join the magnus carlson tournament and after that uh, now they are uh, asking me to play okay I don't no, I can, no no don't don't play it right now pay, pay attention to the class that is very important so right. i did not join the tournament yeah okay all right what should be your strategy in the end game okay end game is when late end game uh, mostly queens are exchanged many other pieces are exchanged some pawns are also exchanged but you are playing on at your your aim should be to attack and win one or two pawns okay if you are able to win one or two pawns then it is easy for you to win after that in the end game okay what should be the other so if, the whole point is of winning the pawns so that you can at least queen one of your pawn because if you are can queen one of your pawn you get a suddenly you get an extra force and with that you will be able to finish the game right that's why the whole intention of the end game is to promote a pawn to a queen safely okay obviously your opponent will not allow you either he will exchange of the pawns or he will guard the queening square so that you are not able to do that but if at all you are able to succeed then you are Ninety nine point nine percent of the time, you are winning the game <coughs> if you are able to queen your pawn, right? And now, for doing that, you also need to get your king out in the center, <coughs> which you never do in the opening or the middle game, right? If you are playing in the opening, obviously you want to put the king to the side because you want safety. <coughs> All the pieces are there. In the middle game, also it is very dangerous to get your king. but in the end game it is quite okay to get your king out uh, mostly it is safe because obviously you have to look at what exactly is the position but mostly it is safe because there are very few pieces left and the kings are actually decisive because they can they play a very important role so in the end game you should start moving your king towards the center or towards where the, there is action and where you can help with the king right so 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 in the end game there is this nice acronym called kufte kufte you can call it king up for the ending king up for the ending right so in the ending you have to get your king up okay now and now it may happen that the position is such that uh, one side is having some extra material maybe okay Uh, and the other side is having less material so what you should be doing if you are the one who is having extra material right then what you should be doing don't relax because you can always lose the material you can do a tactic etc so try don't relax keep control and exchange all the pieces 
right? Pieces means knights, bishops, rooks, queens, whatever is remaining, try to exchange, but leave your pawns on the board. Now, if you are, what will happen is, if you are a piece up, then you will also have an extra piece left in the end game and only other pawns, like in this case. Here, what has happened? White was actually one piece up in the middle game. So he exchanged off everything. Now in the end game, see white has got one, two, three, four, five pawns. Black has got four pawns, but white has got an extra knight. So it is very easy to win with an extra piece in the end game. But it is not so easy to win with an extra piece in the middle game. Because there are a lot of other pieces on both sides. Right? So if you are on the higher side in material, exchange pieces, but keep pawns on. Okay. What is the advice if you are behind material, if you are trying to save the game, if you are behind, you are trying to draw or you are trying to somehow make a thing and your opponent is trying to win or he is very much ahead, then don't give up. Don't give up. Never resign a game. Always play on till the end. You may get a chance to turn the tables or you may get a stalemate or a draw. So never resign. Don't give up and get some counterplay. So most of the time, if you are only defending, then you will not be able to do it. So you need some, some of your own active moves where you are also able to create some threats. Okay. The last advice for if you are behind is exchange of as many pawns as you can, but don't exchange pieces. Okay. Why this is important is because most of the time the win in the end game happens by queening a pawn. But if all the pawns are exchanged, then there is nothing to queen and many times the extra piece is useless okay for the side which is higher so do you know that uh, we have seen in the end game if you have both of you have a king and one side has got an extra bishop though it is worth three pawns i mean worth three points but that extra bishop is not able to checkmate and it's a draw theoretical draw right similarly if you have an extra knight against opponent's king and just only the kings are left and one knight Again, it's a draw. But if you have an extra pawn, then there is a very high chance that you will be able to uh, support that pawn to become a queen and then you will be able to win it. Right? If you have two pawns extra, then it is almost certainly that you will be able to win it. Right? So this is, this is uh, what happens. So, so this is the basic strategy. I hope you got uh, just a recap in the opening. Develop all your minor pieces put your king to safety, get a share of the center and connect your rooks, right? That is the strategy in the opening, first 10 or 12 moves of the game. You should be able to accomplish this, right? In the middle game, use the space and the control, try to open lines, to attack, try to create threats. Also be alert to threats from your opponent, which you need to defend against, right? And look for tactics. Be alert for tactics, both for you and against you, right? In the end game, try to win at least one or two extra pawns against the opponent, which will make your thing easy and move up your pawns, not just carelessly, but while able to defend them so that you want, you can become at least one of them can become a queen, right? Fine. So, so that is the thing and get, get your king up in the end game and what we discussed in if you are ahead of material or if you are behind material or whatever way, these are the things, right? Ahead material, exchange pieces, keep the pawns. Behind material, you are trying to defend, lose, you are losing, then exchange all the pawns, keep the pieces, okay? So this is the general strategy, okay? Try to follow this. And I have on, on the second page, I have given an example game where this strategy is roughly used okay so you can try to play through this game okay and get a sense of what is happening so because in this game roughly we have called out how the strategy has been used first a get all your pieces out in the opening right then b get at least a stake in the center right first is six moves seven moves almost all the minor pieces are out three plus three six pieces are out we'll see this game I will show you in like a study. Okay. So I have entered it not fully, but okay. So how the game starts? E4. It's a good move, you know, E5, good moves and keep the central control. Knight F3, knight C6, bishop C4, bishop C5. Right? See, 
in just four moves or three moves you have developed reasonably well then you bring out your other piece opponent also brings out a piece so six minor pieces are out very good way to develop right then then you are trying to support your pawn further black also supports it so far so good it, you could have played better but nobody will say that you have made any big mistake here okay both sides have developed well right now white creates a threat white puts a threatens the uh, knight and black also counters it by developing another piece now actually what has happened is black is slightly better now because he has developed all his pieces while white has moved his same bishop twice so slightly black is actually better okay now white tries to develop his piece here it's okay it's not a great move but it's not a bad move either so black also tries to kick away the bishop now bishop comes back then black <coughs> chases down the bishop now bishop has got only one square so exchange happens so far so good right so now black is threatening the to not just the knight but also threatening to fork the king and rook so white develops his bishop and at this point of time see if the knight were to move, black to move if the knight were to move back then it will be an advantage to white okay but what black does black does knight to d4 okay comes out in the center which is a good move because it is trying to keep some control over himself if it goes back then it is not going to have any control over the center right so so what happened so knight to d4 actually i get at least a stake in the center when early middle game has started so now white does not want to exchange the thing so he attacks the bishop it's fine pieces get exchanged but after that black plays c5 and secures the knight on the center so knight black is actually now better okay because the knight on d4 is a good centralized knight so and even if you exchange it uh, black will get its pawn in the center well defended so it's a very nice way so black has black has followed the strategy well white has also followed but black has played slightly better right so now black tries to uh, sorry white tries to undermine the black thing but black further attacks the bishop and then pins now see how the black is now starting to get more control and starting to drive the game right now now it is using a pin on the f3 knight now putting a pressure so white cannot bear the pressure so he tries to force matters but in this case what happens is bishop takes knight f3 now forcing a forcing queen cannot capture it because there is a your black knight is on d4 see how powerful it is so it is forcing a doubling of the pawns okay so now see what happens in the in the thing so next now in the late middle game what it is he is trying to do he is trying to first putting his king to safety and then he is going to try to put some tactics to win right Why, try to put some tactics to win so first he attacks the f3 pawn with the developing the queen now it is okay to develop the queen because so many pieces have got already exchanged so quite okay so queen f6 is a very good move now attacking the f3 now there is no way to defend the f3 pawn so what black can do black can at most try to kick it away but but knight picks up the pawn so now black is one pawn ahead okay so now black strategy is trying to then he wants to first of all he is ahead so he does not want to create complications he wants to make safety so he castles now both his rooks are connected okay so both the rooks are now will come into play and now the uh, while white is in a bad position white king has also moved anyway castling was not possible queen side castling is anyway now ruled out so white king is like in the middle so going to get caught in the middle okay but see how the thing happens so white is not making any blunder but but black is playing better so now instead of trying to exchange the pawns because if he had exchange the pawns here white black had taken then 
white bishop would have again taken the pawn and and be equal roughly at least in the pawn terms but what black focuses on is that he is now no longer bothered about the pawn he is wants to now the king is in the center he wants to open the line okay that is black pawn so this is very important okay rook a to e8 is a very good move from black so white goes on exchanging the pawns it's okay black also exchanges but now white wants to get his rook out why is he playing h4 you have to realize because he wants to put his rook to h3 attack the knight and then maybe get the rook back to e3 square also okay because there is no way that he could have got it from this side so he is trying to get it from the other side okay but black does not allow him black is trying to open the lines now for attack against the king okay see how this is how the strategy is it's progressing so now if you see h4 e4 <clears throat> rook c1 e crosses d3 king crosses d3 queen crosses d4 is what black plays black attacks this pawn here but e crosses d3 king to d3 king takes the pawn queen to d4 check now white is now black is further ahead black is uh, black has got 1 2 3 4 5 pawns white also has got 5 pawns but positionally black is much better because the king is now in the severe danger so actually king has got only one square to move king to c2 right king to c2 then now see now white black picked up one more pawn here which which white had put up because now the queen is also attacking the h4 square so black picked up the h4 pawn right then rook e1 queen rook e1 queen crosses f2 queen crosses f2 queen to g4 queen to g4 knight to f3 it's not i mean it's not like a grandmaster game but it is just illustrating how 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 black is using black takes this you have check to the king now queen crosses d2 right now see now so much now he is ahead now once ahead in material now what is black strategy now still there are queen and two rooks on the board for for white so what is black strategy black strategy will be now to exchange all the pieces and go into a piece up ending so if both the rook gets exchanged both the queens get exchanged then black will remain one knight up and he should be able to win it very easily right so how do how does it do it let us just see systematically it goes about so king to b1 knight to h2 king to b1 now the knight is under attack so knight goes to h2 attacks the queen meanwhile and the knight is defended by the by black's queen okay so see how it is doing while it is remaining defending it is attacking the queen as well as the rook together right so knight s2 queen f4 knight crosses f1 queen f4 see now what what <clears throat> white wants to exchange the queens and then thereby get it but first knight attacks the kills the rook so even when exchange happens now 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 black is further ahead on material completely ahead on material sorry it is not queen to Oops, oops, oops. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I think I made some mistake here. Obviously, uh -huh. queen knight takes f1. What was? Queen takes f1. White queen took it back. Obviously, right? Otherwise, would have been a piece down. So now, now, <clears throat> black is one exchange up. So he picks up the 
d5 pawn and white comes to c4 p into c4 so now at this point of time black actually will be very happy to exchange the queens is it not because he is getting into a ending where it is so much plus so this is a mistake from white but black is very happy to exchange the queens right so what does he do very 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 no happily point he very happily he exchanges right this is something that you should remember when given a chance if you are so much up okay i think this should be the main line promote so given such a chance you should never try to move away because then it will give more chance for the uh, other side to play some complications instead you exchange off this is a very important decision exchange off and now it is very easy right f5 rook d1 uncle yeah instead of uh, rook e1 he could have moved the bishop um, to uh, yeah yeah could have see there are so many things he could have done attacking the queen yeah, yeah. but but we are what we are following is not not every options that are possible but we are trying to see how one side was using a strategy right black was using a oh. strategy so okay. so when it was ahead in material it was trying to simplify so that there are not too many complications and it is trying to make a easy win so now the win is very easy now still there are one rooks actually if it exchanges of one more rook then the win is very very simple right so not complications so that is the that is what strategy is about where you don't give unnecessary chances to your opponent you try to completely squeeze him out and without any chance so it is like if you are playing in cricket right i'll just explain if you are playing in cricket you need only 30 runs to chase to win now you should not try to play risky shots in the air because then you may get out and then pressure may increase and lot of things might happen instead 30 runs to do you will want to do simple safe strategy by just taking one singles doubles some odd boundary and you will be able to win it without any chance right that is the strategy that you will apply similarly in chess also here this is what is the strategy when you go into the end game okay all right so after this i will not actually show but it is very easy okay after this the win is very easy rook d1 rook e4 rook c1 right king h2 king b2 maybe yeah so now now the black is going to very easily queen this pawn right so so see how it is so now black is not going to go after this pawn or make some complication he is simply going to push the pawn there is already this rook is supporting this rook is also here so very easily it is going to queen it then the rook will have to exchange against the pawn and then two rooks will be left and then you will be able to checkmate very very easy right so this is just a very simple example not that it's the greatest example but what is illustrating is in each stage of the game how the strategy is being used to make simple approaches to winning okay all right so play through this game play through this game fully to see it so yeah so that is that any any questions any questions on the strategy that if no questions then actually we have done so <coughs> now there is only one theme left in the lecture uh, in the l2 class which is the end game studies we are going to do it next week and then be ready for the exam and the final tournament okay so in about two weeks from now we'll be completing the l2 course okay so get ready try to play slowly and use all the time to think try to do less blunders okay so that be careful and try to follow the strategy uh, now in the next uh, few games next few practice arenas try to follow the strategy and uh, win systematically let us see okay all right that is all i had so if nothing else if there are no questions then i am going to end it so let me